Morning everyone, it's Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42. It is Monday, the 5th of July, so day after Independence Day here in the United States, and a few days past uh, Canada Day for our neighbors in the north. Hello everyone. I have a lot to share today, but I only have three cross-stitching pieces to share today, so I'm going to spread them out through my video. I'm hoping that you'll stick around because the last one is kind of really, really cool. At least I think so, and I hope you do too. But I want to start off with a story, as I sometimes do. And I want to call this story, And Then There Were Faces. I started making Floss Tube videos in 2017, and one of the things that I have found for me is that by making Floss 2 videos, I have been given the opportunity to meet so many people in person and to make friends in my adult life that I never had before. Um, I've also made friends virtually through Instagram, FlossTube, Facebook, Zoom meetups, and it has been it has been the best thing that I did for myself. So back in 2018, I had the opportunity to meet two ladies who make floss tube videos. It was at a first Thursday meetup, and their names are Holly and Anita, and two wonderfully sweet ladies. I enjoyed meeting them so much that day. Fast forward to August of 2019, and I got to go to a stitching weekend at another friend's house that I met because of floss tube, Lori McCleary. Her house over in Sisters, Oregon, there were nine of us there that spent three, three days stitching, chatting, laughing, having fun, and one of those ladies was Anita. Fast forward to last week. I got a message from Anita. She was in Oregon because she has family here and she wanted to know if I wanted to meet up at Acorns and Threads. You bet I do. You bet I do. So I immediately set out word to people who were close in area and some of the people that I contacted said that they could make it, and some of them said that they couldn't because of life. So Tuesday morning, the 29th of June, I headed up to Acorns and Threads. Now because of COVID, June 30th was the day that our governor had said, if you're vaccinated, if you're fully vaccinated, you can go without masks. I went up to Acorns and Threads the day before that, so I took my face shield with me. When I got out of the car at Acorns, I had my face shield on. I opened up the door, and what I saw was Janine, the owner of Acorns and Threads, standing behind the counter, not with a mask on, but her face. Standing across the counter from her, not with a mask on, was Anna Stitch Rodies, her face. Next to Anna, not with a mask on, was Cheryl, one half of Stitching with the Sisterlies. Every single one of those faces was smiling, and it was beautiful, and I took my face shield off. I went over, there was hugging, there was laughing, there were faces. So a few moments later, the door opens up and Becca walks in, Sambri Stitches. She has a mask on. She sees the four of us standing there with no masks, smiling back at her. She ripped that mask off so fast and there was more smiling and there was more hugs and there was more laughter. We were joined by Becca's sister, Rachel. And the five of us at that point were just talking and laughing and walking around the store shopping. 
And I happened to be walking over to the new section in Acorns, and I heard the door open, and I heard this voice go, Mrs. Walster. I know I had the deer in the headlights look because that was the voice of a teacher. I haven't been called Mrs. Walster since my kids were in school, and they're 42 and 36. Yeah. It's been a while, but still, I knew that was the voice of a teacher addressing me. And I turned around, and sure enough, there's a teacher standing there. That teacher just happened to be my friend Anita. More laughing, more hugging, more smiles. It was great. And then there were faces. After a year and a half of COVID, we have made it through. There are faces again, and not just masks, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. The six of us did some shopping, did lots of laughing, lots of talking. We went over to McMinimins across the parking lot, and we had lunch, and more laughing, and more talking, and more smiles. There are post pictures posted on Instagram of the six of us, both at Acorns and Threads, and at McMinimins, so, and then there were faces. It was the best thing ever. I did make some purchases there, and I will share those purchases a little bit later on because one of the projects that I'm gonna share with you used those purchases. So, my first project that I'm going to share with you is fully finished. This is Blackbird's Blackbird Designs America. I stitched this on something, some sort of linen. I don't know. Where's my book? I'm dropping stuff. I just heard something fall on the floor. I'm not going to pick it up. Alrighty. Blackbird Designs America. I stitched this on 32 count French Cafe Mocha. I used Silks For You PR-168. This was the silk that was sent to me by Vicki Stitch and Buttons. And I love the way this looks in blue. I just think that this is absolutely gorgeous. I've seen a lot of people stitching it in red, and that's what the original was stitched as. But in blue, I think that this is just, just beautiful. So that's the first piece of three that I'm going to be sharing with you. All right, let's go back and look at my notes and see what the heck I'm supposed to be talking about now. All right, I was at Acorns on July 29th. On July 27th, last Sunday, a week ago Sunday, there was a online Acorns and Threads 25th anniversary bash. If you've ever done any sort of class or special class through Acorns and Threads, you know that you get a package and it's wrapped up and you're not allowed, you're not supposed to open the package until the class starts. Because this was going to be a Zoom gathering, we received a package in the mail. Now, I know that whatever the pattern that the designer has put in there is going to be wrapped as something else. So I opened it up, and sure enough, here is a letter. And right there on the top, do not open the package. So I didn't. I was good. It happens. It's rare, but it happens. So they had... According to what I could see on screen, there was over 150 participants for this Acorns and Threads Anniversary Bash Zoom Meetup. And I want to talk about a couple of the ladies that work with Acorns and Threads, and one of them is Tasha. 
if you haven't figured it out, I'm a Star Trek fan. I think Tasha beats me in being a Star Trek fan. But the best way to describe Tasha in terms of Star Trek is that she's Scotty. She's the engineer. She was the one behind the scenes running the Zoom celebration, making sure that the people who were talking were on the screen. She's the one that when she realized she was having problems with her own internet, she switched it over to her neighbor's internet with their permission without any interruption to this Zoom celebration whatsoever. So, Tasha would be Scotty, and if she should happen to watch this video, I hope she realized that's a really high compliment for me because she did a fantastic job of making sure that the people who were talking were the ones that the camera was focused on. Because if it was like a regular Zoom meetup and there was 150 plus participants in there, it would have been crazy to see everybody all the time and try to figure out where we were supposed to be looking. The other lady who does a fantastic job and always has with everything that I've ever participated in was Jerry. If you've ever met Jerry, the only way to describe Jerry is she's an energizer bunny. That woman has so much energy and she is the event coordinator. She set this up and it was absolutely wonderful. We got to see projects that Janine has done. We've got to see projects from all the ladies who work for Acorns and Threads, with the exception of Lori, who was over at the coast celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, belated Lori. And of course, as with any big class like this that they do at Acorns, they had a guest designer. And this time it was Liz Matthews. And she shared with us stories of when she was a child and she was there with her mom, who was designing projects for Acorns and Threads. And how cool is that? that Janine has got to have both a mother and a daughter design projects exclusively to Acorns and Threads. And this time what we got is a pattern called Needle in Hand. It came with fabric, floss, and needle. And as you can see, I haven't started it because I almost never do. I was working on another project. We got this cool little acorns notepad and one of the things that I really enjoyed about this Zoom celebration was that not only was Liz Matthews there, Jeanette Douglas, Anne, Anna from Gloriana Silks, Steph Lindy Stitches, Michelle Bendy Stitchy, Janine McGowan, Cecilia Turner, Kathy Haberman, Beth Twist, all made guest appearances, unbeknownst to Janine, just to come and wish her congratulations on being open for 25 years. Roz, the original owner of Acorns and Threads, was also part of this group. Janine bought the shop from Roz, I think, 16 years ago. So it was so nice to have all these designers come in, wish them congratulations on being open for 25 years. It was nice to have Roz there. It was nice to have all the ladies from Acorns there. It was a lot of fun. So, pile on the floor. But what I was working on while we were doing this Zoom celebration was my piece for my next online retreat, which is going to be happening this weekend. I am participating in the Black Needle Society's Frogwarts Year 2. Now, I had not... I had not participated in Year 1. When it popped up last year, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what a retreat in a box was. And I wasn't willing to take a risk. 
and that was my loss. This year, when it came around, having heard about it from last year, I decided that yes, I wanted to participate in Frogwarts year two. So I signed up and I joined the Facebook group for Frogwarts year two. And one of the first things that, one of the first posts that we got in the Facebook group was, hold on just a moment. Sorry about that. It's really weird. I was looking and I saw somebody walk by the south side of my house and nobody should be walking by the south side of my house. So I had to go figure out who it was. It was my neighbor. Apparently their dog ran in the backyard. There you go. I was starting to talk about Frogwarts year two. Okay. I joined the Facebook group and the first one of the first posts that they had was that if you wanted to purchase the fabric and the floss pack, you could do so by contacting Cecilia Samplers in Branson, Missouri. So I did that. I ordered my fabric, I ordered my floss. I shared that on a video a while back. It was the floss that came in the plastic baggie that looked like a poison bottle. So that was cool. I set it aside because I didn't have my box yet from the Black Needle Society. Well, it arrived about a week, a week and a half ago, and it was open. And I was just like, hmm, why is it open? So I brought it inside. I took a picture of that. I posted it on that Facebook group, and apparently there was an issue with packing tape. There were several people who got packages that weren't sealed, but everybody got all the stuff that was inside of it, which was <laughs> really nice. Everything was there. It was just an issue with the packing tape. Not a big deal, but it caused me some concern. So I went through and I pulled out all the stuff and I looked at all the stuff and there was a lot of fun stuff in there and I did not do an unboxing because I know that Becca is a representative for Black Needle Society. I know that Aaron Tumartini is a representative. I know that there are others and they all did unboxings. So I didn't need to. But when I got all my stuff unboxed, I decided that I'm going to get ready for this retreat. So I went and grabbed that floss that I had ordered from Cecilia's and I started bobbinating. And when I started bobbinating and I got all the floss bobbinated, I went to put it on my ring. And the bobbins wouldn't fit on my ring. There was too many of them. So I went upstairs and I had some Harry Potter themed craft paper. Yeah. And I made floss tags. And I came downstairs and I unbobbinated all that floss that I had just bobbinated, stapled the tags onto my new cards, and I got all my cards, or all my floss, on floss cards, on my ring. And I started stitching. The third color I came to, I was supposed to use, I couldn't find. So I started comparing the colors that I had been sent to the colors listed on the pattern. And there was only a couple of them in that package of floss that I received from Cecilia's. I was really confused about that. Fortunately for me, I stitch with DMC. And I have a variety store here in town that has a full spinner rack of DMC. So I took my pattern down and I bought all the colors that I needed. I came home, I made more floss cards, I got everything hung on there, and now I have all my colors for doing my Frogwarts year two. I think some of the colors I was sent was from Frogwarts year one. I haven't compared it to that pattern yet because I did purchase that pattern. I'm not upset that I didn't get all the right colors because it's DMC and I always use DMC so I will use this floss. 
I spent a day bobbinating, unbobbinating, cutting out cards, getting all my floss ready. As you do. As you do. So, before I show you my Frogwarts piece and the pattern, I want to show you something that I had talked about, oh, several videos ago. I went crazy and I purchased for myself from the Pottery Barn a Harry Potter themed lap desk. Of course, I got Gryffindor, Gryffindor, so it's padded on the back here. On the front here, it has the Gryffindor shield. It slides to the side, and on this side is where I can keep my pattern. It's also where I keep my floss. Whoops. On this side, I have the lovely little Hogwarts envelope bag that Jen, Jasmine Ravenclaw, sent to me. This is gorgeous. I don't have anything in it yet. Down at the bottom I just have the little green bag and the only other thing I have in here right now is the hand mirror that has Gilderoy Lockhart on it because it's here too. And we have to check our smiles. Like all the beautiful smiles I saw up at Acorns that day. So, this is what the band sampler for Frogwarts Year 2 looks like. It has a basilisk, and right in the center of it is one of those things that I really don't like. And I did a center start. So this is where I am at with Frogwarts year two. I did a center start and if you look right there in the center of the pattern is a spider. And as Ron would say, I don't like spiders. The colors that she chose for that spider to be stitched makes this spider look like a wolfie. And we have wolfies here in Oregon. We get them out on the front porch every year. I walked outside one time and from the column out at the edge of the porch to right next to the door there was this big cobweb there. It had to have appeared instantly as they do. And there was a big wolfie and they do get big bodies here. And they're hairy. Ugh. I don't like spiders. I have a rule at my house. If the spiders are outside, they can stay outside. And I'll take a great big stick and I'll move them further out into the yard. But if they come inside, they're dead. I'm sorry. I know there's people that cringe when I say that. But I, I can't. I can't. So I asked Mark to move that wolfie. He went and got his camera and spent 45 minutes taking pictures of that wolfie. Never showed them to me because he knows I'd heard him. But he finally moved the wolfie off the porch so that I could go back outside. Anyway, this is what I was working on during Acorns and Threads 25th Anniversary Bash getting ready for Frogwarts Year 2 online retreat coming up this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to be working through a lot of the retreat. I'm going to try to participate as much as I can. Um, this week I do have Thursday off, so I plan on participating then. I will be working Friday and Saturday, and my plan had been to 
participate after I got home. My plans for Friday have changed because last Tuesday when I was up at Acorns and Threads, when I was driving home, my new to me 2013 Ford Focus developed problems and limped home. So I now have an appointment with the Ford dealership in Canby for Friday after work, so I will be sitting at a Ford dealership trying to figure out how much my new car is going to cost me. <sighs> yeah. If it's just the computer, um, I know they should be able to replace it easily. I'm hoping that it's still under warranty because the car has less than 100,000 miles, but I don't know. I'll find out Friday. Alright, I have some mail that I want to share with you. And I want to start with this one. This is from... This is from a friend that I've never met in person. This is from my sister witch, Stacy. We connected through Instagram and she has been a highlight of my life since I've met her. She and I have sent things back and forth to each other and it is just so much fun to get surprise packages from her and to return surprise packages to her. And I know that she had watched my previous video because I get this, this envelope lovely decorated and it has a little note up here and the note says look on back for important de details LMAO I am a delicate flower a friend that I've met but I haven't met in real life I'm hoping that someday we do because I will be hugging Stacy and seeing her beautiful smiling face. That is my hope. But in it was this lovely package and it's wrapped up with a wax stamp on there and I love sealing wax and sealing stamps. And I opened this up and inside here is some lavender. I have lavender growing out front. The bees love it. And a package of alyssum seeds. I love alyssum too. It is so, so sweet smelling. But if you know me, you know that I have been making journals and she made one for me. And this is just beautiful. There is pockets with cards in here. There is a variety of different papers. There's some prints in here. They're just magazine pages. Coffee paper. There's book pages in here with more pockets and tags. This one that has a belly band. All of this stuff is absolutely wonderful. This page is full of goodness. And then on the very back, there's another pocket with more stuff in here. An old pattern cover. What a cool idea. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you so much. I absolutely love this so much. And then I also received another package from another friend that I have never met in person. This one came from Lisa Prims on Greenway. She is the one who made the black velvet strawberry that started all the strawberries. I had to rearrange a little bit, so there's not as many strawberries out today as possible as there has possibly been. 
yeah, words. I'm speaking good. In this package, she blew me away. A lovely little card with calligraphy on it. Some antique lace. Several different wools, pieces of wool for more berries or whatever else I might make. She included a little pattern. It's a Lizzie Kate pattern. Everything was wrapped up with a lovely piece of seam binding that will get used. And then she sent some fl floss tags. with the bling on it. Yes, there's a spider on there. As long as it's not moving, I can deal with it. But she also sent me a little moon. And I am a moon person, so... Thank you, Lisa. I will be talking more about her in just a little bit. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! And I almost forgot this. She sent me two antique handkerchiefs that she found at estate sales. There is this one that has Lily of the Valley embroidered on it, and she sent this one, which may be harder to see, but there is an embroidered A right here. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay. So like I said, Lisa was the one that inspired me to be stitching or making strawberries. I decided to branch out a little bit. I saw this, I get a newsletter from Kelly Stadola. And I saw this kit, and it's a little wool kit. So I'm going to try a wool project, and of course it's a strawberry scissor fob. And it has all the stuff included in there. I, I may have to ask Anna to help me make this because I've never I've never done anything like this and I got I got something small because I want to start small because who knows how obsessed I'm going to get with wool stuff and Lisa is all into the wool and she sent me wool and I have this and I know Anna does wool applique and <sighs> am I going to go down another another rabbit trail? I do not know. Okay. Alrighty then, it's time for me to show you what I made, what I was inspired by Lisa Prims on Greenway to make. If you don't watch her, you really, really need to go and watch her because she has done some fantastic things. And obviously, she has inspired me with all the strawberries. She posted a picture on her Instagram, which is also Lisa, uh, or Prims on Greenway. It's Prims underscore on underscore Greenway. She posted a picture on Instagram of a pillow that she had made. And it was on an antique plate, and there was some pearls with it, and it was a very beautiful picture. And I liked it. And really didn't think anything else of it. It was very pretty. It wasn't until I watched her video and she actually showed that pillow in person that I kind of became obsessed. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make that pillow or something like it. Hers was made out of an antique handkerchief. 
that she'd found at an estate sale. And she showed it three-dimensionally, which is different from seeing it in a picture. So I looked at that. I paused the video. I went back to where she was holding it up again. I took a screenshot of it and then I started thinking about how can I do this? How can I replicate this? And I thought to myself, well, it's small, so I'm going to need a small pattern. And then I realized I had been sent that pattern from Leslie. The Redbird Designs Texas Thistle. So I went upstairs and I got this pattern. And I looked at the back of it and it only calls for five flosses. Three of them are DMC. Light green, dark green, light lavender. The other two were Rainbow Gallery. And I thought, no problem. I was going to be going up to Acorns on Tuesday. I could pick up those Rainbow Gallery flosses. So then I went and I was looking for some linen to stitch Texas Thistle on. And I happened to have a piece of, let me check my book again because I can't remember. Picture this plus Heartland. So I'm going to make this pillow. And it's not just any pillow. It's not a flat pillow like this. It's a triangle pillow. Yeah. It is a triangle pillow. So I brought my three DMCs downstairs. I brought my Picture This Plus Heartland downstairs. And I started stitching. I got the whole plant part of the thistle stitched. That's hard to say. Thistle stitched. And I looked at it and I went, oh crap. And Mark was sitting across the room from me and he goes, did you stitch the wrong color? Yes. Yes I did. I stitched the whole thistle plant in the light green, not the dark green. The thistle plant was supposed to be dark green with the light green on the inside. So I set it aside and I went to bed. And that's when my brain took over. I've described my brain before as a cauldron. And apparently the cauldron decided to bubble and percolate all night long about this pattern and how I was going to make this triangle pillow. I don't sleep well. I toss and I turn all night long and I kind of sort of wake up when I do that. And every time I kind of sort of woke up, I was thinking about thistles. When I woke up in the morning, I was still thinking about the thistles, but I had figured out what I needed to do to make this work to create a triangle pillow. What I needed to do was not only restitch the thistle plant, but I would have to stitch it twice. I was going to have to mirror the image. And I'm not talking about mirroring the image like this. I'm talking about mirroring the image at a 90 degree angle. Because my brain, my cauldron, had been percolating and bubbling and came up with this idea. And I'm slightly crazy, okay? It, it just, it is what it is. So I took the pattern to work with me and I made two photocopies and I'm not going to show you the front with the pattern on it but what I did trying to figure out how to 
make this pattern work, how to be able to mirror it. With these two photocopies, I played with it and I figured out how to, where to glue this pattern together, tape this pattern together, so that the pattern would not only be across the bottom, but also go up the right hand side. Because I'm crazy. So, that evening I came home, I turned this fabric over to the other side, and I started restitching my thistle plant. And I got it back to the same point. I had, I got it back to the same point where I had the thistle plant stitched in the dark green. And then I couldn't do any more because I needed those two specialty flosses from Acorns and Threads, Rainbow Gallery flosses. So when I was up there with all the beautiful faces on Tuesday, I looked at their Rainbow Gallery flosses. I needed a whisper. They didn't have the called for color, but they did have this dark purple. And then the other Rainbow Gallery floss that was called for, they didn't have, but Janine was able to tell me that it was a wool. So she helped me pick out a Bella Lusso 100% pure merino wool, colorway 303, in this beautiful lavender color. And then I came home and I started to figure out how to merge these two thistles, one stitched this way, one stitched this way. And what I had to do is, with this first flower here, I then needed to do the purple whisper. I then needed to use the lavender wool and branch over to where the thistle flower here would be, and then the purple whisper, and then I could restitch this pattern here so that they were at a 90 degree angle, merging this flower and this flower. I've never done anything like that before. I didn't know what I was doing, but I kept plugging away at it. I got that first flower merged. I got both designs stitched. I got all the purple whisper done. I got all of the purple or the lavender wool done. And then I had to use the lavender DMC to finish the flowers. And this was the area that I was really kind of worried wasn't going to work. So I started on the outside flowers of both thistle plants and I stitched in because where they were at at the begin at the middle is where I would be merging that light lavender DMC. I happened to be working on that last Wednesday when I was on Becca's Zoom meetup and one of the ladies, Jan, asked me what I was working on and I said I can't I can't show you because I'm experimenting and I don't know if it's going to work. And then they listened to me as I tried to count stitches and unpick stitches and count stitches and unpick stitches and I think they were laughing with me. And it worked. It worked. I was just beyond thrilled that my thistle plants came together. So, then I had to make the triangle pillow. I had it here a moment ago. I'm losing things. So this is where the gift from Lisa, which showed up at just the right time for me to do this, really, really helped because she had sent me this antique handkerchief. She had used an antique handkerchief to make hers. So I figured I could use this to figure out what size I needed to cut my linen to replicate this because I don't have a pattern. I, I'm, I'm 
pulling this out of the cauldron, trying to make this work. But I used this, and I opened it up so that I had half of the handkerchief, and I used this as my template to cut out my linen to create my triangle pillow. Okay. On Lisa's triangle pillow, because she used an antique handkerchief, it had scalloping around the edges. I don't have scalloping on my linen. So something else that I had picked up at Acorns and Threads was some Lady Dot Creates Rick Rack. I got Pumpkin Boo, which is a lavender color, and I got Witchy, because it's a green color, Thistles, purple and green, How am I going to put this together? I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm not a seamstress. <laughs> I, I'm lazy when it comes to sewing. Um, I get ideas and I try them, and if they work, they work, and if they don't, well, I tried something. But I'm lazy when it comes to sewing. Let's just say that, that's why I'm not gonna be a quilter. So imagine, if you will, this is my cutout piece with my design over here, just like the embroidery on this napkin, and I have this piece here. How am I going to put this together? I cut out my linen, approximately the same size of this. I cut out a piece of interfacing, a little bit smaller than this, and ironed it onto the back of my linen. I then took this piece of linen and I folded it in half so that I had a square. Then I took the Rick Rack, <coughs> sorry, tickly throat. Then I took the Rick Rack, the purple and the green Rick Rack, and I tried to sew it together so that it overlapped. My first attempt at doing that was not good. My second attempt was much better. And then I decided that I was going to sandwich the rickrack in this seam down here and this seam up here. So I did that. Now the next part of it is where you make the triangle pillow. Because when you have it at this point, you've got your folded edge, you've got a sewn edge, you've got a sewn edge, but the top is still open. And instead of sewing it square and having a flat pillow, like this, you take your sewn edge and your folded edge and you bring them together and you stitch it vertically. Your bottom edge is horizontal your back edge is vertical. Want to see it? I took advantage of pausing the camera to go get something to drink so I didn't start coughing like crazy. I was just about to show you my version of a triangle pillow that I was inspired by Lisa Prims on Greenway. I think this is just... well you decide. This is my triangle pillow. This is the thistle pattern that I stitched and mirrored and made it merge right here on this flower. This is the rickrack trim that I made to create, to replicate the scalloped edge that Lisa had on her pillow. The back seam, after stitching it together, I used the lavender wool to cross stitch up the, the edge to make it look prettier, and also to catch the rickrack right here on the side. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Now, I want to explain that 
when you're stuffing this pillow, you have to think of the analogy that Helen D. gave you about stuffing pillows Thanksgiving dinner. You stuff a pillow, and when you think you're full, you have to save a little bit of room for Thanksgiving dessert. When you're stuffing a triangle pillow, you will stuff it enough to have eaten the Thanksgiving dinner. You will stuff it enough to have had seconds and thirds and dessert, and then you'll be going back for the turkey and cranberry sandwich afterwards. I stuffed and I stuffed and I stuffed and I stuffed and I poked it down into all of the corners and I kept stuffing and I kept adding more and I was like, is it ever going to end? But this is my triangle pillow. You can see it's a triangle. It's three dimensional. There's the back of it. That's the folded side. I think this is just so very cool. I thank you, Lisa, for inspiring me by showing me the one you made with the antique napkin. The one that I was showing as my example, wherever I put it, the one with the embroidered A on it, I'm going to make another one out of this. This is just absolutely gorgeous as far as I'm concerned. I had issues with it when I was sewing it or sandwiching the rickrack on this side. I, I skipped about that much of it. I just went back afterwards and whip stitched it in place. It's not perfect, but it's beautiful and it's gorgeous and it's mine. And then after I had all of this done, it dawned on me that there's a much easier way to do it than trying to figure out how to put your pattern together to mirror it. And the designers have already done the work for you. Have you figured it out? It took me four days. We've watched floss tube. We've seen people take elements out of patterns and just stitch that little element and make a pillow out of it. I've done that myself. Have you got it yet? Do you know where I'm going? Look on any pattern that you like that has a border. Ink circles comes to mind, but there are so many others that could be used. If you have a pattern that has a corner border or a corner motif, you could stitch that to replicate this for your corner design on your triangle pillow. The pattern for the thistle is 45 stitches wide by 23 stitches high. So since I had to add a little bit of space and add my other thistle over here, think maybe 50 stitches by 50 high something that you could stitch just a corner of or you could do a square or a flower or whatever there and you could create your own triangle pillow. All I ask is that if you do please tag me on any picture that you put on Instagram with your triangle pillow and please also tag Lisa Prims on Greenway because she's the one that inspired me to make it. If you're not on Instagram, if you send me a picture to my email, acwalster at gmail.com, I would love to share it on a future video. If you're one of the few people that I have as friends on Facebook, I don't accept friend requests on Facebook because that's my private space. You could send me a message through Messenger. You could message me through Instagram, stitchywitch42. But if you decide to make a triangle pillow, please send me a photo of it or tag me some way so that I can share it on a future video because I think this is really one of the coolest things that I've ever made. 
I showed Mark. He thought it was one of the coolest things I've ever made. And again, I want to thank Lisa for inspiring me. I think that this triangle pillow is just absolutely one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And I hope somebody else will be inspired to make one. And Helen, if you wanted to do a tutorial, yeah, <laughs> go for it. I'll tell you everything I did. Wait a second, I just did. Anyway, that's all I have to share with you, my friends. Until we meet again, live long and stitch on. Bye-bye.